Antibiotic Awareness Week. Woo! And I wanted to help spread the awareness by telling you what you can do to help prevent antibiotic resistance. So antibiotics are medicines used to treat and in certain cases to prevent bacterial infections. Antibiotic resistance occurs when bacteria change in response to the use of these medicines. It is the bacteria and not the humans or the animals taking the antibiotics that become antibiotic resistant. These bacteria may infect humans and animals and the infections they cause are harder to treat than those caused by non-resistant bacteria. So antibiotic resistance leads to higher medical costs, prolonged hospital stays and increased mortality. And this antibiotic resistance is accelerated by the misuse and overuse of antibiotics. So basically, not taking a full course when you have correctly been prescribed them or taking them when you absolutely, 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 absolutely do not need them. Like when you um, take them because your knee is acting up or you have the flu. And as well as that, poor infection prevention and control can cause antibiotic resistance. There are many, many things we can all do to try and reduce the impact and limit the spread of resistance. Number one, only use antibiotics when prescribed by a certified healthcare professional. Number two, never ever, 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 ever demand antibiotics if your health worker says you do not need them. Most doctors know better than to give in to ridiculous demands like that, but I have heard of some prescribing them just to get the patient out the door. So don't ask or don't even suggest antibiotics unless your doctor has confirmed or is very certain that you have a bacterial infection. I mean, the Center for Disease Control has said that at least 30% of antibiotic courses prescribed in the outpatient setting are unnecessary, meaning that no antibiotic was needed at all. And most of this unnecessary use is for things like acute respiratory conditions such as cold, bronchitis, sore throats caused by viruses, and even some sinus and ear infections. Number three, never share for God's sakes, never share or use leftover antibiotics. This is something that I hear about far too often. Antibiotics are not one size fits all. There are specific antibiotics for specific infections. They target different aspects of different bacteria. So one type of antibiotic may not treat the bacterial infection you think you have. Number four, prevent infections from happening in the first place by regularly washing your hands, preparing food hygienically, avoiding close contact with sick people and by getting vaccinated. Number five, if you have pets or animals, only give antibiotics to them under veterinary supervision. And this goes for any sort of medication too. Don't give them anything unless you've been told to by your vet. And don't, oh my gosh, don't give them human medication. That is a massive, massive bugbear of mine, but that's a whole nother kettle of fish. And that's it. Those little things aren't that hard to do. And if you do do them, then we'll all be better off. When the World Health Organization recently reported that tuberculosis or TB, is the number one global infectious disease killer today causing 1.8 million deaths per year. So to put that into perspective, that's kind of like almost 40% of the population of Ireland dying from TB every year. And then we have drug resistant TB and that's the most common and lethal airborne antibiotic resistant disease worldwide today. And it's responsible for a quarter of a million deaths each year. And what's worse is that only two new antibiotics for treatment of multi-drug resistant TB have reached the market in over 70 years. Research and development investment in TB is seriously underfunded and it is at its lowest level since 2008. So 10 years. And it's so easy to sit there and hear these facts and figures and kind of shrug it off. But the thing is, is that there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't get it too. The BCG vaccine is only really effective for kids. The BCG is, as you already probably know the vaccination against TB and it is only really effective against severe forms of the disease such as TB meningitis in children but it is not as effective against all forms of TB and it kind of doesn't really work once you turn 35. People who are over 35 aren't really offered the vaccination so be warned. So there are so many facts, figures and statistics floating about um, on antibiotic resistance and it could get a bit confusing if you're not super fresh on your math and if you've been meaning to relearn the basics of math from school, but you don't even have a scooby of where to start, then you should start with Brilliant as they have a really great introductory course available in the fundamentals of math. And that includes things like algebra, probability and logic. So if that's something you're into, you can check them out by going to brilliant.org forward slash science with Katie, where you can sign up for free. And they are offering 20% off an annual premium subscription to the first 200 people. So go check them out. 
And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to further support the channel through Patreon, you can by following the link down below in the description too. Thank you for watching. Bye.